Hello Internet, Retro Kevin here. In today's video, I'm going to be cleaning one of the dirtiest SNES controllers I've ever seen. And while we're at it, I'm also going to be replacing the conductive pads. So, let's head over to the workbench and see what we have for today. Here's the controller we'll be working on today. I have never tested it out, so I don't even know if it works or not. But it does need a very thorough cleaning. So let's get that cord out of the way and take a closer look. You can clearly see the grime on this. And the buttons and D-pad do not feel good at all. Again, it's covered in grime. Let's open it up and see how it looks in the inside. We'll just need a small Phillips screwdriver for this. I believe the one I'm using here is a number zero. Next, let's carefully flip this over so that we don't send those screws flying everywhere. Now, all of these look pretty rusted. We'll polish those up later. Now we can take that board out and get a closer look at those conductive pads. That D-pad has seen better days. Not a single one of those look good. That will be replaced for sure. This is really the only one from the buttons that look bad, but still enough to get replaced. The start and select look okay, but we'll replace it regardless. And the shoulder pads look okay as well, but just like the others, we'll get replaced. Let's set those shoulder button posts off to the side so we don't lose them. This is the dirtiest shoulder button I've ever seen. The grime almost seems to have scratched into the plastic it's so bad. Well, let's take a look at those other buttons, shall we? Wait, Ew. look at this. I don't even want to imagine how a controller gets this dirty. Surprisingly, with the D-pad, I've seen worse. And the A, B, X, and Y buttons don't look too bad. Let's get to cleaning, and we'll start with wiping everything down with a non-bleach Clorox wipe. And for that grime, I'm going to need something to scrape it away. A pick and a small flathead screwdriver should do the trick. This stuff is just caked on there. We'll just continue wiping and scraping. This is going to take a while. For the buttons, I found that pulling the wipe through them and using a flossing type technique works the best. Of course for this controller, I'll need to scrape at that grime. I think it's worth noting, I'm not using the point of this pick. Rather, I'm using the rounded side so I don't scratch up that plastic. Sorry I'm not always keeping this controller on screen or in focus. While filming, I was more concerned about getting all that gunk off that I wasn't paying the camera enough attention as I should have been.
These buttons here are going to need a lot of scraping and wiping. This is pretty gross. It amazes me just how much scrubbing and scraping all of this needed. I knew this controller needed a good cleaning, but I honestly didn't think it was going to be this bad. We have to remember to get those fine detail spots. Again, let's be careful here not to scratch up the plastic. I'm going to soak the lettering on the back so it'll be easier to scrape those corners. Amazing how much gunk can hide in such a small spot. For the lettering itself, I'm going to use a toothbrush. This does a really good job at getting in between everything without harming anything. Now for those screw holes, we'll soak them again and use a cotton swab to get in there. Yeah, those were pretty bad as well. Next, we can disconnect this cord so cleaning it will be easier. You don't want to pull on those wires too hard, and seeing how it's not coming out easy, I'm going to use my pick on the sides to gently remove it. Now set that board off to the side and use a Clorox wipe on this cord. I will use this first for cleaning. I'll come back to it later with a protectant wipe. Next step could have been done earlier. I'm going to wrap up this D-pad in a few wipes to let it soak. Hopefully that will make cleaning it a bit easier. While that's soaking, we can clean the button contacts with some denatured alcohol and a cotton swab. Again, I'm surprised these are not worse than they are. Now these other buttons aren't too bad either. So just a quick wipe down with the Clorox wipes will do the trick. Now for those shoulder buttons. I'm going to wipe them down first, then use my flathead screwdriver and pick for that grime.
Again, I'm trying not to think about how these buttons get this dirty. This stuff is almost embedded into the plastic. It's been so dirty for so long, it has almost become one with the controller. Once done with that, let's go ahead and unwrap that D-pad. I'm not sure if the soaking helped or not, but seeing as how we had other stuff to do, it's not like we wasted any time or anything. Once we get most of that gunk off, we can switch to a cotton swab and get those corners wiped down better. I'll admit, twisting while wearing these gloves is a little more difficult than it should be. But with the condition this controller is in, I really don't want to take them off. Almost got all of it. There we go. Looks pretty good now. Once everything is clean, we can go ahead and wipe everything down again. But this time, I'm going to be using an automotive interior cleaner and protectant wipe. Once done with that, we can move on to polishing those screws. For that, I will use a number one medium grade steel wool pad. It's not perfect, but better than it was. And we'll just repeat that process for all the others. Now I'm going to show you the difference a couple bucks can make. I picked these pads up for about a dollar each. I got them in bulk, so maybe less. Look how thin and cheap they are. Ugh, get those out of my sight. Now these I paid a little more for. Not much, mind you, but look at that quality. Let's get a side-by-side -side comparison. So we're going to use these for the pad replacements, and just throw those other ones in the garbage where they belong. Now we can start putting everything else back together. Don't forget those posts for those shoulder buttons. Once we get everything together, we can test it out. However, this video is getting pretty long already, so I think I'll just save that for next time. Just a quick test of those buttons, and this feels like a new controller. It looks a lot better than it did. So there we go. With some common tools, and a lot of wiping and scraping, we were able to take one of the dirtiest controllers and make it look almost like new. And remember, when replacing conductive pads, you get what you pay for. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you liked this video. If you really enjoyed it, please like, comment, and subscribe as it'll help out me and the channel quite a lot. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.